What up, YouTube? It's your boy. Me. Wib. I'm... I'm the boy. So everything I'm going to be showing you in this log has actually already been on the internet, whether it be on Twitter, in our anniversary bat rep, or in our charity livestream. But I didn't really get a chance to talk about anything individually there, so let's do that now. The first model I painted in August was this Wraith Lord for my living statue Eldar. I'm using the exact same technique that I used for the Wraith Guard, just blown up to a larger scale. I also spent quite a bit of time with the base on this one, trying to integrate the sculpted base it came with, with the style of the bases that I'd done for the other minis in the army. I did this by strategically adding rocks, texture, and tufts to it. I'm really pleased with the result, especially since I do have the habit of phoning in bases a little. And it should hopefully mean that although the final army will end up having several models using this same sculpted base, I should be able to modify them all to look at least a little bit different. This model is also magnetised, so all the guns can be swapped out, although I only have the current loadout of them actually painted. So if the double bright lance loadout I pick doesn't end up working out, well, I can always swap it out. Next is one of the few minis for my Eldar that's going to be painted normally, my Spirit Seer. Given that my force is supposed to be an Exodite one, I wanted to keep their colour palette in natural sort of tones, barring the bright blue bits. So I carried over the green from the tabards of the Spirit Host models, and added some brown for the other cloth parts. I decided to paint the armour parts using the same technique as the stone on the rest of the models, just so it'd tie them all together. I originally toyed with the idea of swapping out the heads for some wood elf helmet or something, but in the end I thought I'd keep the regular head so it's easy to tell what it is on the tabletop. After all, the helmet and the staff are really the only thing that makes the spirit seer distinctly stand out from, say, a farseer or a warlock, especially from tabletop height. Overall, I'm happy with the way it looks, especially when put with the rest of the army. It'd be easy to make look out of place given that it's painted in a different style, but I think it works. Now we've got a big one. Big enough that I had to change my usual way of filming it. This is a Wraith Knight that was a very generous birthday present from Shanus, so thank you very, very much, Shanus. When I started painting it, I was worried that it'd look too plain with the statue effect, but honestly, I really like how it turned out. It's not super detailed, sure, but I think there's just enough different shades on there to make it work. This was originally going to be magnetised like the Wraith Lord, since I saw lots of people say how easy it was to do, but once I saw how people did it and I tried a few things on my own, I couldn't really find any way that I was personally happy with. So I just rolled with it and went with sword and board. Although all I'd actually need to be able to swap out the arms is just the shoulder joints since the arms pop off for transport, so I'll probably try and pick those up at some point. Speaking of the sword, I did the same blue effect on it that I did with the Spirit Seer, but added more layers of highlights onto it since it was a bigger canvas. Quite happy with the effect, and it breaks up the solid stone colour quite well, I feel. But still, this is the biggest model I've ever actually painted, so I can't wait to see it get murdered on the tabletop by Snipe's Imperial Knight since they just get to be better for some reason. Grumble, grumble. Lastly is another batch of five Wraith Guard. I won't go into too much detail since these are basically the same as the batch I did last month. All I did differently with this batch was to add a little bit more stuff to the bases. So, you know, more rocks, more tufts. Uh, but I also added some skulls on there for variety, which fits with my headcanon for them, where there was an Imperial survey team that went to the planet these Eldar come from and just never came back. I might add some Mechanicus parts to some future bases just to further kind of sell that theme. But yeah, another five done, and I have another five ready to paint, so hopefully I'll have that apocalypse box fully painted by the next video. So here's the complete month's worth of models. And although I wanted to paint some non-Eldar this month and didn't get around to it, I'm still pretty happy with my progress, especially since one of the things I painted was kinda huge. My totals for 2019 are now up to 44 models painted against 45 models bought. So not only have I nearly caught up again, but I'm less than 10 away from my goal for the year, so that's pretty neat. Next month I promise to have a few non-Eldar models to show, including a rather fun Forge World Dreadnought I've been working on. So, see you then. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Because YouTube...